Happy Friday! We are on day seven! <laughs> so the Facebook Live for this one is Tools for Transformation. So in case you've been watching and you don't know a little bit about me, I kind of wanted to share a little bit about my background information before I go into talking about Tools for, trans tools for Transformation. Excuse me. So if you're watching this and you're not sure um, about who I am, so my name is Danny, and I'm, I know you've heard me say that. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, so I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I have my certification as an addictions professional. And I've been a therapist for about 11 years. I will tell you, the first few years that I was a therapist, I would say I was pretty hypocritical. Um, I was telling my clients to not to do the very things that I was doing, Hi, Ellen. Thanks for joining me. As you guys join in, please type in the comments. It's so awesome to see you, and especially on a Friday. Um, share in the comments if there are any tools that you have used in your journey of transformation if you've already started. So as I was saying, I've been a therapist for about 11 years, and uh, the first few years working with clients, I really wanted to help people, but I really needed to help myself. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Chris. This is great. You guys are jumping in so quickly. This is awesome. Hi, Lachmi. Um, and I started out with wanting new friends. I, maybe let me not say wanting new friends. I started out with having a desire for more. I really wanted to feel fulfilled. I was waking up every day feeling very unfulfilled. At the time, the friendships and the relationships that I had, they weren't very fulfilling. I wasn't excited about life. I actually kind of dreaded things sometimes when I woke up, but I always knew I wanted to help people. And it wasn't until I started to check out yoga classes, I started meditating. I mean, I really had no idea what I was doing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not the person that can do handstands or anything like that. Um, oh, we've got Lachmi saying hi all the way from Trinidad. Thanks for joining internationally. Awesome. Um, so once I started checking out different yoga classes, meeting different people and talking to different people, kind of seeing what people were up to, that's when my transformation work started. It started with meeting other people and talking to them about what they were up to and what they were doing. I started out with meditation looking it up on YouTube. I remember I used to listen to um, a guy on YouTube that had a British accent and I loved his meditation. Now I listen to the Calm app. It's called C-A-L-M, Calm. They have a free version. That's one of the tools actually. Um, I really like that app. They didn't pay me to say this. I do like that app because I do believe they have a free version and a paid version. The free version is a little bit limited, but I think you can try out the premium version. The Calm app has guided meditations. It has bedtime stories for adults. Um, it also has just music, if you like just music. It even has some master classes on there now, which is pretty cool. Um, so yoga, um, with the yoga, when I was, when I started taking, when I started going to yoga classes, it was really, I wanted to just go because I wanted to stretch. You know, I'm always on the computer. I'm always on my phone. So my head is always kind of like this. And so, Hey Jose. So when I started going to yoga, it was really just to stretch, um, until I started coming across yoga classes that almost felt like church. They got really deep. They got into certain poses and feeling like because I was getting connected with my body and the poses started to get challenging, I remember the yoga instructor would say things like, you know, what are your thoughts right now? What's going through your mind? How do you talk to yourself when the yoga poses start to get a little bit challenging? Um, so yoga, um, meditation. Meditation really propelled me into transformational work because I really started to pay attention to my thoughts. Another thing that I said I, that I think was a huge contribution to my transformational work thus far, in-person live trainings, especially experiential ones. Once again, all of these tips that I'm telling you guys, no one paid me to say any of these things. These are things I've done personally. Um, I've done gratitude training. Gratitude training is, they have three parts to it, part one, part two, and part three. Part one really has a lot to do with your breakdowns and becoming aware of, of where you break down at when, when things push your buttons. 
The second part has a lot to do with breakthroughs and you moving through those breakdowns. And then the last part is taking everything that you've learned in the first two parts and really applying it to your life. Um, I loved that training. And then I've also done landmark. I've done the first part. I haven't finished it just yet. Um, I will tell you, honestly, I was registered to do the second part. And at the time I was registered, I was not mentally stable. I was in a, in a very deep depression and I couldn't get myself to that point. I wasn't mentally healthy or health. Like I wasn't mentally fit. I, I would say for the second part of the training, but I have done the first one. So if you have any opportunities, and I mean, there are tons of them out there. It's just a matter of researching what's near you. I know that um, gratitude training, primarily based in South Florida, and they have an, an, another version of it called All True in New York. I believe Landmark might be all over the country. Um, and you can, if you Google uh, any kind of um, transformational or personal development in live person trainings are com so, I prefer them significantly more than master classes. Uh, I think master classes are helpful, the ones that you see online sometimes, but I do, I do really think that in person, when you get the chance to experience trainings and you get to see how you operate subconsciously, because reading books is great, listening to podcasts is wonderful, but actually playing games and exercises and actually participating in them wholeheartedly, honestly, with no judgment, you really get to see the kind of person you are. Here. So I would recommend that. Um, as I mentioned, some podcasts, TED Talks. I love TED Talks. If you've never heard of TED Talk, um, just put in TED um, Talk or TEDx. Sometimes it's called referred to as TEDx variety a variety of different topics on there um it's i mean i can't even tell you there's so many different things you can check out brene brown she has an amazing ted talk on vulnerability uh, my former coach monica reyes has a ted talk my current coach suzanne adams has a ted talk um so it's awesome you you can really learn a lot from the ted talks it's usually about Anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes, an expert speaking on a particular subject. So TED Talks are great um, for, for contributing to a transformational journey. Um, podcasts are really awesome. There are a variety of different podcasts that you can listen to. Um, In-person trainings, as I was saying, meditate. Whether you go on YouTube, Calm app, there are um, so many different forms of meditation out there um, that you can access. Um, gentle flow yoga, um, books. I love books. If you don't have the time to read a book, then listen to an audiobook because I'm sure you're driving to work, driving to and from places. Some books that I could recommend, um, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I love that book. Um, so he talks about four agreements, um, be impeccable with your word. So, you know, say what you mean, mean what you say. Don't take things personal, right? Don't make assumptions and always do your best. I love that. Those, they sound very simple, but it's actually really challenging. He has a great book. I haven't read, um, he came out with the fifth agreement and I've heard that, that that's awesome too. The fifth one is primarily on being skeptical, challenge things, don't just, just, don't, don't just take things as they are. Um, Necessary Endings by Dr. Henry Cloud. I really like that book, that book is great. Necessary Endings, he talks about, Understanding the importance of sometimes needing to cut cords. Sometimes it's hard for us to move away from people. And when I say move, I don't mean demographically. I mean, you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally from people who may not serve us. If they are holding us back or they may be like an anchor to us, we feel guilty sometimes cutting those people off. And we need to, because if you think about, I like the analogy that he gives in the book. He gives the analogy of us being like a rose bush. And with rose bushes, if you're familiar with roses, so the rose bush needs energy in order for the roses to bloom. And he says how if, say, the rose bush has certain flowers that are growing and they're beautiful but you have some other roses that aren't quite healthy, they're struggling to bloom, or maybe they're dead. When you keep those parts of the bush 
alive or there, it takes away from the energy going to the healthy flowers. So what does a gardener usually do? They cut off those dead parts or they cut off the flowers that may be sucking up the energy but are having a hard time blooming. So that way the healthier roses, the healthier flowers can get that energy. It's the same thing with us. So we don't need to feel guilty or ashamed per se because we need to move away from those people. We can still love those people from afar, but knowing who they are and where they are in relation to us, knowing, okay, let me acknowledge that that person no longer serves me. Doesn't mean you need to be rude. Doesn't mean you need to be mean. Um, it doesn't even need to, it doesn't need to mean anything. I feel like I have a sneeze coming on. <laughs> I've never had a sneeze in the middle of a Facebook live. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, if I sneeze, forgive me. <laughs> so, so it's important to be mindful of who, who, who in your life is taking energy away from you. That um, kind of vampire-like, right? Another book, Girl, Wash Your Face. That blew up, I feel, um, by Rachel Hollis. That's a great book. She actually just came out with Girl, Stop Apologizing. Something that I like about Girl, Wash Your Face, she's very honest. Um, she, she's very real and she attracts so many people. She attracts people who are single, are married, people who are married, moms, teenagers, young adults, um, middle-aged women. She, she attracts so many people because the book has so many stories and you can learn so many lessons. I love it. You laugh, you cry. I mean, the book is great. Um, the last suggestion for a book, I would say, You Are a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life by Jen Sincero. She also has another book called You Are a Badass at Making Money. I love that book. That book is another one. She's very real, authentic, um, and I really like how she tells her story. So here's the thing, though, with transformation. You can do all of these things. But if you don't apply them to your life, it really doesn't matter. And that's with anything, like even with therapy, when I do the group therapy sessions and individual sessions with my clients, and we talk about all these wonderful tools and tips and tricks and secrets and all this, all these things. But when you walk out the door, sometimes all that stuff goes out the window because it's when crap hits the fan. It's when things get really challenging that's where the work comes in. That's where you need to apply the things that you've learned. So even though I'm doing this Facebook Live, these are all great suggestions, in my opinion. Um, but I do think that it is important to make sure not only are you applying the tools, but that you have a support system around you that can help keep you accountable, keep you on track. Because human behavior, we all always end up veering off path. Um, before I end this Facebook Live, I do want to share how proud I am of some of the clients that I've worked with in the past. They are doing some amazing things, feeling really grounded, getting great jobs, feeling really balanced, feeling very happy. And the thing is, what's really cool to see, it's beautiful to see them blossoming into happiness that's not just superficial. Um, someone recently told me about being wealthy, right? There's two forms of wealth. There's spiritual wealth and there's financial wealth. And it's awesome when you start to develop that spiritual wealth. I can't tell you how happy I am to see these ladies doing well. So if you are interested in coaching, contact me. And I hate to say this, but today is Friday. One of my best friends is actually coming into town this weekend. So we will resume our Facebook Live 14-day coaching series on Monday. I hope that you gained something out of this live. If you have, please make sure you type it in the comments. And I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, loves. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>